is the soundtrack to Happy Valley. You guys play the best music. Greatest music ever. You guys rock. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna party tonight. Cause honestly, I just don't care. 4.5. It's all hippie 94.5. We're here with Don Benjamin, the most recent alumni on America's Next Top Model. What's going on, Don? Hey, how's it going? Now, we're going to start right with the elimination. Were you surprised, and did you see this coming, especially after the big challenge fiasco? What was going through your head when you landed in the bottom two with Marvin? Honestly, when I did the challenge, I felt like I was going to be in the bottom from it. Usually, I do good on the challenge score, so I felt like that was going to set me in the bottom, but I didn't expect it to be me and Marvin. I thought it might have been like me and Chris. His picture was bad in my eyes. It seems like you and Marvin have been the tightest throughout the competition. Was it weird being in the bottom with one of your best friends in the house? Yeah, it sucks at that point because it's like, man, this is my boy in the house. I want to move forward, but at the same time, I would have felt horrible seeing Marvin go just as he felt horrible seeing me go. So it's kind of like a double-edged sword at that point. So this week, you got to work with animals, and the styles were really weird but pretty cool at the same time. Did you like the shoot, and did you like working with the animals? What did you think of it? I liked working with the animals. The only reason it was very hard is because the snake kept moving, and because we were trying to get a live picture, it wouldn't work. As soon as the snake would move out of the picture, it would throw the whole thing off as to where if you're not shooting with moving photos, you can capture the snake moving, and it still might look cool in the picture, you know? So it was really difficult at that point. So the judges said that you had a great face in your photo, but they weren't really feeling the rest of the picture. Did you agree with the critique of the judges, or did you think your picture was better than someone else's? I honestly, I liked my picture. I liked what I did in it. Um, I felt like my neck did look a little stiff, but other than that, I liked how my body was positioned. I liked how I was holding the snake. Yeah, I felt like there was a couple people's pictures that were way worse than mine that it got cut some slack. So your challenge score was actually what set you apart from Marvin, and that's what sent you home. Can you tell us a little bit more about what happened? Because they didn't really go into too much detail in the actual episode. Yeah, well, my backstory, a few years back, I was brutally attacked by so many of us police department and ever since I've been dealing with PTSD, panic attack, anxiety, you know, when the attack went down I was handcuffed so I was out of control of the situation. So now like whenever I'm in situations where I don't feel in control, like I kind of lose control of my mind and it starts freaking out and once I got down into the water with that helmet on and the helmet like started bouncing on my face and like water felt like I was coming into the tank, I just felt out of control of the situation and I just freaked out man and I was like I can't be down here I just started thinking everything was falling apart with all that said, though, I think you did really well, and you didn't seem like you were freaking out or crying like some of the other models were. You still pushed through, but they gave you a five. Do you think that was fair? Because it seemed like you had a really good attitude about the whole thing, despite being a little bit worried about the challenge. I was highly upset about the five because a couple of challenges ago, I think it was like the runway shows or something, and Jordan and Marvin didn't even book a show at all, and I think they still got like a six or seven. So, I don't know, I just felt like I kind of got played on the scoring all around. I take my losses like a man. I took it like a man in the show, and it sucks, but I didn't complete the challenge, so I gotta take whatever they give me. So I gotta say, probably one of your best features is your eyes. I remember you basically as the guy with the sexy eyes. Do you actually use your eyes to your advantage? And do you think you have one of the most interesting looks out of everyone? I definitely like to use my eyes to my advantage, man. It's a blessing. I tell anybody, if you have a blessing, man, use it to your advantage. I try to use my advantage. Corey had the eyes as well, but he was a little more on the feminine side. He didn't really take advantage of them when it came into play. So yeah, I definitely had to work on them. Well, you definitely have no problem picking up girls. So we did a segment the other day on our morning show about pickup lines. If you could use a pickup line, what would it be? What is your go-to pickup line to use? I go with the cheesy route. You know, I ask them like, are you a model? Have we worked together before? If not, we should definitely set up a shoot. I try to approach it more on the business end of things and then now we can work it in and maybe ask them out to dinner or something after you make them feel more comfortable like it's just business. Well, that definitely work on me. I like that one. So during the show, it seems like there are a lot of crushes between the boy and girl models. Now, did you have any secret crushes in the house? I didn't really have a crush on any of them. I mean, being in a house around girls like me, automatically I gravitate towards women. So, you know, I like to talk to them and conversate with them. And me and Alice kind of connected, you know, both dealing with our anxieties. I think we talked a lot. She was a cute girl, but I didn't like none of the girls on the show really. I, I wouldn't see myself dating any of them. It seems like Marvin definitely had some problems with the ladies. Now, did you kind of help him out with the ladies because he didn't really have a lot of game? Did you give him any advice? 
I would try to give him advice all the time, and he would just let it go out the window. I'd be like, man, you got to play it easy. You just run through the house with a condom telling these girls to come get it. You know, that's just reckless. I'd be like, you have to, like, talk to them and have conversation with them. Maybe bring them in your room when nobody's around, you know, and he just would do the opposite. He'd run through the crib like, yo, who's trying to cuddle? Who's trying to get it? He's gotten a lot better now, but when we first got in the house, he was very reckless. I gave him this little book I had. It's Barrel You Left. It's like a uh, how to be a gentleman, how to treat women, how to hold yourself to a man's standard. So hopefully he's finished the book and hopefully he's gotten a lot better because when we first came on the show, this guy was reckless. Well, when we finally get to interview him, we're definitely going to have to check in. So after doing our research before the interview, we saw that you're actually a musician and we're a radio station. So tell us a little bit about your music. I've been doing music actually longer than I've been doing modeling. My sound, I'm trying to do like, I like storytelling. I like doing stuff that has like a meaning rather than just talking about popping bottles and whatnot. I just released a mixtape. I have a couple of singles on iTunes. My single is called Real. It's just kind of telling like my life story. So I'm more than a model. I'm more than an image. Like a lot of people will look at me and be like, oh, this dude, they may think I'm full of myself or that I come from a good background or whatever. So I just like to inspire through music. Well, we'll definitely have to keep up with your music and what's coming out in the future. Now, speaking of, what are your plans for the future? You're doing modeling. You're doing the music thing. Do you think you're ever going to add in acting? What are your future plans? plans. Before I did the show, I actually had did a couple acting roles. I had a couple guest spots. I was on Desperate Housewives, Bones. So I'm honestly after the show, I'm just gonna continue to push everything. I'm doing my music. I'm working on an EP. I'm gonna, I'm walking actually in a fashion show for LA Fashion Week tomorrow. I'm trying to get a new agent for acting. I'm starting a clothing line, man. So I'm trying to be very proactive. I understand like you get your 15 minutes of fame, and after that, people forget about you, man. I don't ever want anyone to forget about me. I want to be a household name for sure. Well, you absolutely have a lot going on. So what is the best way for your fans to follow your career? Do you have a Facebook, Instagram, Twitter? How can they follow you? My Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, they're all It's Don Benjamin. So the ITS in front of Don Benjamin. I try to keep it all the same. And then my personal website is imdonbenjamin.com. And that has like the link and everything alongside of it for people to get connected as well, along with music, videos, my clothing line. Thank you so much, Don. We're really excited to see how your career is going to progress. Thank you, man. I appreciate you for having me. Like us on Facebook at B94.5 Morning Zoo Crew.